Hello folks and welcome to a hex casting tutorial. Hexcasting 0.9 is out, which is exciting. Um, I can't wait to show you a little bit more. I asked around on the Hexcasting Discord and folks asked me for a tutorial on Thoth's Gambit and how you might use it. They also asked me uh, on the Hexcasting Discord, how can we do something a little bit more practical around our bases rather than make a big boom? And um, so, I thought maybe we could do that together real quick. Um, I've been hard at work in my base, um, and I'm taking some time out for my survival. Are you serious? Are you serious? They're everywhere these days. So um, I set up a little bit of a space here, and I've redone my field. Now, there's a whole bunch of things going on here that I don't really feel like talking about right now, including a, a damaged bookworm. That's a bit surprising. Anyways, um, what we're going to do today is work on improving my wheat output. Well, I mean, that's nominally what we're going to do. Really, I'm just going to show you how to make the spell. But So there are rows of wheat in this field. And what I'd like to do is be able to improve and harvest these instantly when I need to for extra wheat. So that's what we're going to do. Now, um, the way that we're going to do that is by setting up a situation where we could use Thoth's Gambit to cast a grow spell over and over and over and over so that I can quickly bone meal all of my various wheat, get it all fully grown, and then instantly break it. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at growth in this, it's a relatively simple pattern to draw, and it encourages a planter sapling to grow the target position as if bone meal was applied. It costs a bit more than one amethyst dust. That seems like a pretty good deal. So um, what we need to do in order to make it work is give it a location. So what I need to do is get a whole bunch of locations for the wheat, first and foremost. In hex casting, the way that we would do this is by storing all of the wheat locations into a focus. I have the wheat locations here. We can go ahead, hold this in our offhand, and I can pull out the data. And as you can see up here in the upper left, I don't have any data. The first thing I'm going to show you today is how we are going to put together a bit of geometry, maybe, if you will. World locations, we're going to put them in a big list. Now, there's tons of ways that you could do this. I'm going to show you how we're going to make a spell that does this and how we're going to actually go about using it, right? Now, this spell will actually be reusable in lots of contexts, because it turns out that there's all sorts of times in the world where you need to take a big list of blocks and do something to them. There are other more sophisticated applications that we'll go into in a later tutorial, but today we're going to focus on static positions in the world. We're going to build a big list, we're going to store it in this focus, and then we are going to go on to uh, actually use that along with Thoth's Gambit in a trinket that lets us rapidly bone meal our entire field at once. So, let's go ahead and make the spell. The first thing I want to talk about is something I use to help me visualize the spells. Now, I want to stress that if I do this, and if you do this spell the same way, it's going to cost a lot more amethyst dust to do. However, I personally find it really helpful, because otherwise everything that happens is invisible. This way, you can see what you're doing, and it's one dust per block that you're going to save. Personally, I don't really feel that cost at this stage of my survival playthrough, but you might. So you could not use this thing here called a sentinel to do this part of the spell. You'll understand, I think, in a moment how you could modify the spell. So basically, first let's talk about what a sentinel is and why we might use it. Sentinels are marker positions in the world. Every hex caster can have one sentinel, and only they can see it. It doesn't really exist. It's sort of just a geometric little mark there that I can see and that helps me visualize one saved value. There's such a thing as a greater sentinel, which has fantastical powers, but we're not going to go into that spell today. Sentinels and greater sentinels basically uh, have a couple of simple operations. You can put a sentinel in a place, you can send your sentinel away, you can find your sentinel, and you can also point to your sentinel with wayfinding, which basically gives you the direction to your sentinel from some other place. That can also be really useful. So, 
uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to make a spell that puts our sentinel on the face of a block. That spell is the exact same spell that we'd write if we wanted to put a block in the world. We're going to do a pair of ray casts, like so. The first ray cast, we're going to use the archer's distillation. It goes here. That finds the block that we're looking at. But if we were to place our sentinel, you would see that it's not exactly what we want. It's inside the block we are looking at. But that's not where we would bone mill. We don't bone mill down there. We want to bone mill there. So what we want to do is put it on the block face. The spell actually to do that involves a double ray cast. One using archers and the other using the, you know, friend of archers. Architects distillation. If we, if you can see here, we now have the block faces normal. So then if we add those two things together and we were to call our sentinel, that would be there, right? So um, the way that I like to build spells uh, is in little pieces. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this spell and put it into a spell book as one little piece. I would call this piece a sort of a place sentinel, right? I think that's a pretty good name for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly write that out and put that in a spell book. Now, you may not have a spell book in your world, and that's fine. You could use a series of focuses. But I think it's really good to build up your spells piece by piece, composably. And at the end, we can put them all together. I'll show you a little trick for that, by the way. And we'll have a completed spell that we've tested each little part of as we go. And that way, if you make a mistake writing the runes out or something like that, you have to go back and do a lot less work. And I think that's one of the other things I can show you in this tutorial is how to actually make spells and not drive yourself totally mad. So let me really quick go ahead and uh, put the first page of the spell book as the um, spell place sentinel on normal. So we'll go ahead and go over here and I'll just cast that real quick. And we can just write this into the first page of our spell book. And, and then I like to name it so I don't forget what I have, right? So let's call this place sentinel on face. Now, one tool I like to use is I have a CAD or CAD um, artifact here. All this does is cast the spell that I'm holding in, the, um, in my offhand. So it basically reads and then calls Hermes. That means that I can test spells really easily, right? I can just point, I can put this everywhere. Now, I shouldn't be casting this all over the place forever because, uh, ooh, a little bit too close there, my bad. Um, I shouldn't be uh, casting this all over the place because it does have a cost of one dust, but there we are. Now we've got this piece. This is the first piece of our spell. The second piece is how are we going to store all of this? Well, we're gonna use a focus. Let's imagine the program that we want. Step one, we are going to read the list out of our focus. Step two, we're going to update that list by taking the, the location of our Sentinel and pushing it onto the list. So let's actually step through that before we put it in our spell book um, so that we can see it in action and you can see me drawing it, right? So the first thing we wanna do is read out of our focus. That puts the empty list on the stack. Now we haven't changed anything, we've just read it. The next thing we'd want to do is get the location of our Sentinel. Now, there is a uh, little pattern called Speaker's Distillation. Uh, this is a very, very useful pattern that I use an awful lot, so it's worth memorizing. And all that does is take the current thing off the top of the stack and shove it in the list. Now, we've actually done our job. What we need to do now is save it to the focus. Boom. We've actually done it. And if we take a look, we can see that we have one of those locations. So that is actually it. Those two pieces that we have, uh, that would make the entire thing. So let me go ahead and put that in the spell book just so that we have it. Now, the awkward part about this particular spell is that we actually have to hold a focus and then do what we're doing. 
This is awkward because it means that we can't hold a spell book and cast things out of the spell book with a CAD trinket, a reader trinket. So we're going to actually have to make a trinket, but I, I can think we can all agree that we really want to be able to do this quickly. We want to be able to quickly take a focus, put an empty list in it, assign a bunch of blocks to it, and then use it in some other spell. And that is exactly what we're going to do by building a trinket. The trinket's going to take the two spells that we've written and smash them into one, because if we cast them in sequence, we get exactly what we want. So I'm going to make a trinket, and then I will show you how I do that. All right, friends, here's the tricky part. Stick with me, and I want to be honest with you here. Everything I'm about to do makes perfect sense if you understand and read the book carefully, but you're going to be seeing this for the first time, and many people here are not used to the programming concepts at play. That's okay. So this part of it, you may not fully understand why what I'm doing works, but I'll explain to you the parts where you can parameterize it, and I promise you that it does work, and that you will be able to reuse this technique all over the place and use it even without fully understanding why it works. So the magic that's going to make this work is the Thoth's Gambit that we discussed before, but importantly, these two patterns, Phlox Gambit and Phlox Disintegration. Phlox Gambit lets us take a bunch of things up off the stack and um, turn them into a list. So we have to tell it how many patterns or how many iotas we want to pull off the stack. Flux Disintegration takes a list and turns it into the stack. So, here's what we're going to do. Firstly, I'm holding my spellbook. Again, if you have focuses, that's perfectly fine. You'll have to juggle a little bit. What you want to do is just sort of keep things in the correct order. So, let's go through and let's actually assemble and try to cast our spell. Um, let's first open up, and I'm going to make sure I'm on the first page of my spellbook. If you're on a spellbook, you just know that while you're in casting grid, you can use the mouse wheel, and you can actually just pick the pages. That's why spellbooks are very, very, very good for assembling complex spells like this, and I keep one around just for rewrites um, instead of daily casting. So what we're going to do first is we're going to load the spell from our spellbook. This spell is the Play Sentinel spell. Then I'm going to turn the page. I have Save Sentinel to focus. I'm going to load this spell into our stack. We have two spells on the stack, so I'm going to write a two. Now, what we want to do is use Flock's Gambit to turn this into a list. Okay? So all we have to do now that we have a two on the stack is tell it. Flock's Gambit looks like kind of a double long arrow, and you make it clockwise. That's how you tell them apart. It's a little bit tricky. Sometimes you do the wrong one. Sorry about that. But now you can see that we've actually mashed our um, two spells together into a list. But this isn't castable yet. If I were to try and cast this, it would fail. And so I'm not. The problem is, is that we don't have a list of patterns, which is what we want for Hermes Invocation or for Trinkets or whatever. We have two lists of patterns inside a bigger list. So we have a list of lists of patterns. We're going to fix that using Thoth's Invocation. So what we're first going to do is actually make a list containing just Phlox Disintegration, right? Uh, Fl oh, by the way, it was Thoth's Gambit. So this, the counterclockwise version of this double arrow, is the magic that we want. We then need to actually switch the argument order here, because I talked about things. Normally I would make this pattern first, the bottom pattern, but I didn't make it this time. Um, so we're going to swap it, because that's the order Thoth wants. Now, if I call Thoth, what it's going to do is it's going to take every list, it's going to break it out onto the stack, and then it's going to return. Thoth is going to collect up all the values that it finds on the stack for every time it passes over the list, which in this case will be twice, and smash them together into one big list. In programming terms, this is what we often call a flat map. Um, we could do other things like concat, but I think this really is the simplest way because you can, if you have six spells, you could do just change that number two up there to a six, and you'd be able to smash things together. So this really does scale really well. And once you understand what Thoth is doing, it's quite elegant. Let's go ahead and duplicate this on the stack. And then, let me get my camera back, and let's try casting it on this block. Well, no, no, let's uh, go to the next logical block. We'll aim it right there. And if I call the Hermes Gambit, we should... Oh, and before I do that, let's make sure to juggle so I'm holding the focus we care about. Easy to... I almost forgot. Don't do that. It's a pain in the butt when you do that. It's the only real downside to all of this juggling. You have to be very, very meticulous. OK, 
Okay, let's try casting it. Bam. And if we look at our focus, well, we've got that. Two blocks in our focus. So all we have to do now is go ahead and put this into a trinket. Um, I've done a video on how to make a trinket out of this, so I'm going to do that off camera. But that's why I saved a copy on my stack. So I still should have room to write the trinket thing out. So I'm going to do that real quick. And um, hopefully then uh, I will come back and I will show you what we do next um, as I build up the list of where my wheat is in this field. But we're getting very close to where we can actually use this list. I think I've got it. So what this trinket does now is let me, as many times as I want, take a focus with an empty list and use it to build up spots in the world. I could be breaking blocks for a block breaking machine. I could be, in this case, making a um, series of places where I want a bone meal. It's all the same. But one thing I want to show is that if you aren't holding a focus, you can see my offhand is empty, it will just give you an error. But nothing will break, nothing's going to explode, you're going to waste a bit of amethyst dust, and that's fine. But if I start to go ahead and put this in, then I can start to actually describe the entire world. And I'll skip the potatoes. So folks, I'm going to go ahead and describe the rest of my wheat field. And then we can maybe show off some of the power we have. All right, I did it. Now, um, again, this spell costs amethyst because it lets you see where you're working. If you're going to be doing hundreds of blocks, I don't think that you should use this spell. You shouldn't use Sentinel. You should just use a Raycast and push. I will leave that as an exercise for the reader. I'll also note that nothing stops you in this spell from actually doing a block twice. It was fairly easy for me to not do a block twice because we did them in a nice long line. But um, you can go ahead and use operations to clean up your list. Um, if you look in the set operations in the book, you can probably see how to do that. Again, exercise for the reader. So let's use this fancy focus now, right? Earlier, I used Thoth's Gambit in a really atypical way. So atypical that I even surprised one of the mod authors, if I'm honest. But we're going to use it in a much more typical way now. So I just want to remind everybody what it is and why it's useful. It takes a list of patterns, and then it takes a list, and then it conceptually runs that list of patterns as if it's happening on each item in the list. I think the easiest way to understand that is to show you. So what we're going to do is cast the overgrow pattern over every item in the list. Now, since we're holding the focus, and the focus has a whole bunch of data in it, right? That's easy. Um, what we need to do is figure out the pattern that we want. I think the pattern that we discussed was the overgrow pattern, which is uh, simple enough to draw. If I recall correctly, it goes like this. Hopefully I got that right, and we put it there. Then let's go ahead and read out of our focus, and that should be enough. I should just be able to thoth. Now, make sure that you have enough media to cover this, but boom. How is that? I just bone mealed everything simultaneously. The bone mealing takes about one amethyst dust. And now my little bookworm, well, he's going to be real busy, isn't he? Because he's got a lot of stuff to harvest. And um, yeah, that is all we have to do. So um, what we might want to do now is write a spell that actually does this so I can do it quickly and not have to draw that by hand. But I will note that if, for example, I were to cast break... I would have a bunch of cleanup to do because I would break every single block here, which in this case would mean that I'd have to go and replant all the wheat. I decline to do that for your amusement. Once again, exercise for the reader. All right, folks, you still with me? This is a complicated tutorial, and I grant that. Now, I want to be clear, if you haven't done any of this before, I recommend actually that you stop here. It's okay. My YouTube minutes are fine. What I'd like you to do is go try what you just saw. Go ahead. Maybe make a tree breaking spell by making a vertical line of blocks. I don't know, maybe make a spell that opens or places blocks at a door. Maybe make something that lights up your uh, nether portal. I don't know, something. But you should try it. And what you would probably do is you'd make a trinket or something like that, or you'd cast with your hex staff, you'd read from a focus, and then you would do something with thoughts on that focus, right? And I think you'd be in a great shape if you did that. If you haven't done it before, you're great. But I'm going to show you a pretty crazy trick. 
it's not crazy, but it is definitely where we get into kind of the madness and what we would call the homo iconicity. That's actually a word, I didn't make it up, of hex casting. Code can be data and data can be code. And one of the really cool things that we can do is we can take this big list that we've manufactured and we can embed it in a program so that we don't have to carry the focus so that we can use it as a more normal spell, right? And um, the trick is consideration. Consideration is a pattern that you, when you draw it, it doesn't actually register in your program. Instead, it says the next symbol that you draw, no matter what it is, I'm going to put it on the stack. So let me go ahead and clear this, right? And we'll just show you if I were to say, I don't know, I could put anything here. I could literally just go nuts, right? Now, it just let me do that. This isn't a pattern, right? This is nothing at all. It's terrible. <laughs> but that's what the power of consideration is that it basically just says, no, nope, I'm going to take whatever you've got and I'm going to put it in a pattern. So we can use that in our program because it turns out that consideration if it encounters something that's not a pattern like say a list of numbers or a list of vectors then it actually embeds it in the program and makes it part of the program and makes it okay it just puts it on the stack this is really really powerful so what, what i'm going to do is make a spell that grows my wheat field and it's basically going to be exactly the same thing as before but i'm going to do it in a slightly different way um, so i can show you the other way that you could put together spells you can use either way, they're equally valid. It's just whatever tickles your brain the right way, whatever you feel comfortable with. So we are going to use combination distillation this time. So let's go ahead and make the two programs that we want to see. The first program that we want to see should put the list from our um, thing here up on the stack, right? Um, so I think what we'd wanna do is, uh, gosh, we would maybe load the list put it inside a list. By the way, that is Singleton's purification. Um, and then we'd want to put that consideration at the front, right? To make it a pattern list. So we can actually consider consideration, which is weird, I know, but then we can use that same speaker's distillation that we used earlier to now make a pattern list. Now I'm going to duplicate this. Well, actually I don't have the room to do it, but I assure you, this is a pattern and it really does work. So then what's the next program that we'd like to see? We can write this with the regular int um, intro and con stuff here, introspection and retrospection, right? So uh, what would we do? Well, we'd assume that we have this first program done. So we'd go ahead and make a second program that does the overgrowth. We'd switch the order of things. And then we thought it's Gambit. And then we'd close that out. Now, um, here's the cool part. Uh, instead, now we have a pair of lists. What we can do um, is use combination distillation. Seen here, it removes the list at the top of the stack and adds its elements to the end of the list at the top of the stack. For our current spell weave here, that does exactly what we want. It takes the list that we just wrote, our overgrowth Thoth spell, and puts it after this consideration. So um, yeah, all I gotta do is write that. And then I gotta get a blank page in the spell book here. And then I should just be able to save that and we'll see, nope, nope, we wanna save it. And let's see if that worked. It's easy enough to see if it worked. We can read it back out and then we can use Hermes Gambit. Bam, we just grew all our wheat. So I just wanna sum over what we did there, right? What we did there was we took this focus, right? Which we're still gonna keep around because we spent a bunch of time making it. We don't need to spend the, the uh, resources. Um, and we embedded it inside a program in our spell book so that now we can cast this. And by the way, this CAD thing can actually read the program off the current thing in the uh, in, in your offhand and then cast it. So like so, right? And I can quickly get all of my wheat super ready to go and turbocharge my wheat production so I can stop inefficiently burning my berries for source. Thank you. And um, yeah, that 
is pretty much what I wanted to go over today. Let's just summarize what we've walked through here. And I really want to, for people who've gone all the way through and maybe taken a little bit of time to try it, I want to congratulate you because these are sophisticated programming concepts. And frankly, you won't run into them unless you're doing like a university course. So if you made it this far, congratulations, you're awesome. If you're going through this over and over again, and you're still struggling, come to the Discord. You can talk to me, you can talk to Wires, you can talk to all sorts of people. We're all there happy to help you understand some of these things. These concepts are tricky and it will take you a while to wrap your brain around them because you probably don't ever think this way in normal life because it's crazy, right? It's fine. And I look forward to helping you and other folks understand these things. Um, but what we have done here is we have made a tool, this little thing here, which I should probably name. We'll call it a, we'll call it a Karen Sext, Karen's Sextant. You thought I was going to say something else. This helps us go ahead and put together all sorts of static locations in the world. And that's fantastic. Um, and uh, we made one of those and we walked through how it works. We also got a brief peek at Sentinels, which is kind of an intermediate topic in the world of hex casting. We then took that to actually build a spell which can do a thing in the world, right? This is super cool in my opinion. This is super powerful. You can use it to bake all sorts of cool machines. And with the things coming out in the next version of hex casting, this technique will reward you even more. So I recommend learning it now. Um, I, there's so many things you can do with just what we've done today. For example, let's say you had a huge reed farm. Why spend all the resources on observers and pistons? You could just set up a break block at the right place all the way through down your reed farm and ba-boom, you can instantly get it all there huck it into a, I don't know, a lazy river, and bam, you've got item collection uh, for reeds. Or you could harvest bamboo, or you could break, I could, you know, break trees here. I know how they grow. I could set up something that instantly breaks all these trees. And of course, there are ways to automate this process. I don't want to do any spoilers in this video, but I assure you it's there. So we've done so much here, right? We've not only made spells that ex, you know exist in the virtual world of Minecraft, but we actually wrote spells that compile other spells. So you are officially a computer scientist as of getting through this, and I want to congratulate you. This was, by the way, the topic that was most heavily asked for in the Discord. I'm writing these tutorials sort of based off of what people are asking me, because we sit around talking about absolutely silly things in the Discord, and then people ask us to translate into English. This is my attempt, my best attempt, I hope, to do exactly that, is explain some basic concepts that we're using and talking about. Uh, please go ahead and ask, you know, any follow-up questions you've got in the comments below. I'll try to get back to them. And uh, I hope that you have fun with hex casting too, because I know I sure am. Thanks, everyone. Bye.